Hello, Hollywood Time viewers. Judy Shields here. Today, we have the great pleasure of having author, he writes poems, Robert Schechter. Hi, Robert. How you doing? Hi. Great. How are you? Doing good. I see your background there. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, the actual book is somewhat smaller, but yes. <laughs> that's the cover. Oh, of, of course. The first thing that caught my eye and my attention is the name. That's the first thing I need to talk about. Where did this name come from? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a phrase that is embedded in one of the poems. And if if you've never heard anyone say the radio blows its nose before that, that's that was the point of the poem because the the poem just talks about uh, and gives examples of things that no one has ever said before. Uh, uh, even though they're regular sentences made up of regular words, no one has ever had occasion to say these particular things before. And uh, this poem was published in an anthology by a wonderful British poet named Brian Moses, who, uh, uh, who used the phrase, the radio blows its nose as a section heading in the book. He pulled it out for a section of like more nonsensical poems. And uh, he, it was that, it was his doing that, which made me think of it as a phrase that maybe uh, was worthy of consideration as a title for my own book. And so I, I, I thank him. I, I, I think it works out. It's uh, uh, at first, like when you choose any new name, it seems kind of odd. Have you made a mistake? But after a while, it, you really can't uh, think of it any other way. And so I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with the title. <laughs> and uh, who was the illustrator? I, these, he's amazing. Well, the the illustrator is uh, 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 a, a a very very young illustrator still in art school. This was his first uh, his first project, and uh, I was very lucky that uh, uh, to be the uncle of this person. That's how I knew about uh, 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 such a rare young talent, and I was I was delighted. Uh, it, it was exactly what I wanted. Uh, it's not necessarily in, in in the style of the illustrator would have chosen, but one of the things I really liked is that uh, uh, it, my vision for the book, which was basically uh, black and white, yeah. uh, black and white simple images that, that don't really uh, aren't necessary to the poems, but would enhance and decorate the poems. That, that, that's what I wanted, and, and the, the, these wonderful drawings were delivered in just uh, a matter of weeks. It, it, was, it was incredible. So the book, the book was produced very quickly. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> one of the benefits also of being with a very small press, it, it, you, things happen very quickly. Uh, and uh, so for me, just a year ago, this is bas basically just over a year ago, I, it was when I first learned I'd be doing a book. And, and here I am speaking with you <laughs> a few months after the pub date. And uh, but yeah, the cover, the, the cover is also uh, wonderful. You could see what what would happen on the cover and in the back if, if these illustrations were colorized. But uh, that wasn't the kind of book we were doing. Which I think it's amazing. The yellow, it catches you, the color. And then when you do open it, I'm like, oh, I love that it's the black and white because it just, you know, it, it it was genius. Very good. So I understand this is, says here, this is your first collection. Yes, it is. It's uh, my first my first book uh, of any kind. Uh, I've A lot of these poems have been published over the years in, in magazines like Highlights for Children and Cricket and uh, Ladybug and various uh, magazines in Australia, the school magazines in Australia, and uh, the Caterpillar in Ireland. And but I, so I've been fairly widely published. Uh, but this is the first time I've brought them together into a book. And, uh, and was that just one night you had that dream and got it well, done? 
No, I, I, I suppose like it was always in the back of my mind, but it was always like something, it, it wasn't necessarily available. Uh, it's very difficult to get a, a book of children's poetry published. And so I was content basically to, you reach very large audiences through the magazines like uh, that, that I just mentioned, you know, Highlights has millions of readers. Alex Peppel, who's the, who, who runs the Word Galaxy Press division of Able Muse, uh, solicited a manuscript from me. I didn't actually have one when he did, but as a result of that solicitation, I put one together. I just went through like years of my accumulated work and came up with a collection and and uh, which eventually became this book. So, you know, it, it's I, I, I owe the impetus behind it all to uh, my publisher. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Thank you so much. It's it's uh, pretty pretty amazing. Poems yeah. have always been something that, for me, as I remember as a kid, trying to struggle to read them, you know, and our teachers wanted us to read them because of the rhyming to help you to read and stuff. And it just seems like, I, it, so it became fun. And then as an adult, I find myself, uh, oh, am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? <laughs> Which is kind of funny, you know, it's like, all right. Uh, do you, you know, it's like people ask, people that have um, artists and stuff, how do you, um, do you have a favorite song out of your album? So of all these poems, is there one that, you know, is closest to your, your heart? <laughs> yeah. I really should just pick one and, and, and go with it, but right. because, because people ask me, it's, 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 it's a question I get asked a lot. I, I don't, and uh, no, there were poems that have sp- that have been my favorite from time to time, uh, but th- they were written over such a long period of time that some of them, like, are more remote from me. I'm usually more fond of if something among my poems that I like, I'm usually fondest of the more recent ones because I, I I'm I could still be sort of surprised by them myself. But or maybe some of the older ones that I can't even remember writing, so I could. Yeah, you know, be surprised by them as well. But mostly, uh, I think there are some poems that are more ambitious and some that are sillier. But I really can't pick out a favorite. Uh, so you know, if I had to save just one from being washed out to sea, I don't know which one I'd I'd, I'd crawl in after. But <laughs> so. hey, that's a great answer. <laughs> as I, as I was going through them, uh, the first one that caught my attention was the horse who said moo. Because I, I love horses and I love animals, and yeah. I'm just like, what? And I just like, I I really like that one. <laughs> oh, thank you. That that would have been on the short list of, of, of my own favorites, and that was written. Uh, that was one of my uh, earlier children's poems, and so I. <laughs> I also like the one, just wondering because I love butterflies, and it's just so short, but it says so much. But there, I, I wonder if there's like. What's being wondered there is, you know, in a literal sense, if a scientist could probably answer it, 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 it you know, just from a point of reference, wondering whether basically a caterpillar, a, a butterfly still remembers being a caterpillar in effect. And uh, uh, of course the application, you know, from in the eyes of children perhaps would, would be uh, like, will I, will I still, remember who I am now when I'm a grown-up and and uh, so but but without it, it, that's only the implication it's not anything I put it you know explicitly into the poem so. yeah uh, also reaching six that's pretty cool because we were hopefully we're all six one day you know that one I really like that one too <laughs> that was oh, good. thank you thank you that's one that that's sort of like as a echoes of a Mills when, when we now we are six is collection, which is my favorite collection. Although it's uh, the only echoes of it, they're both about being six, I guess. And then, of course, I was looking for the nose one, but you have one that's called my nose, and that's pretty cool too. <laughs> As there is no, I don't know why it is. I never was aware before I was writing poetry that I have a, an obsession with noses, but apparently I do, or at least I I have an obsessive belief that they are funny items to put into children's poems. That's, uh, <laughs> That's why you have a red one there blowing its nose. It's pretty awesome, you know? 
the ear <laughs> blowing his nose. But, uh, I don't know. Noses are funny. You know, they, they, scientists have studied which words are funny, the, the funniest words, supposedly. And I, I always heard that duck was supposed to be the funniest word, but I, I don't. I have more noses than ducks in this book. So. <laughs> well, I agree with you on the nose. <laughs> you hit it right on the nose, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> And then I also like you have one I hear about the elephant because I truly love elephants as well. And and to think of an elephant sitting on a fence that was drawn here is priceless. Are okay. you going to read one for us? Uh, sure. Do you have a request there? <laughs> so, <laughs> well, uh, did you want to? Did you want to pick out a nose one? <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Let me let me find a nose one. Uh, there's so many. Yes. There's uh oh here we go thirty seven my nose yeah that one thirty seven I don't understand how people have their own you know like songwriters writers are expected to performers have to have everything by heart but fortunately I I, uh, I get to read and uh, well this is one called nosy advice <laughs> oh right no and it, it's got the worst. Yeah, you know, the biggest groaner of a joke in in the book. Most of most of the poems are, are are a little more subtle, I think. Maybe maybe I don't know, but no matter that your nose may sport a patch of pimples or a wart, no matter if it's long or short, if you would sniffle, sneeze, or snort, a nose of any kind or sort deserves your full, complete support. And so I say to everyone, from astronaut to poet, hold your nose in high esteem and don't be slow to show it. You only get one nose in life, so make sure you don't blow it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't I even know what that means, but I don't know. People seem to think it's funny. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the last line, don't blow it, okay? <laughs> yeah. You know. Fine. Sure. And uh, you know, for, for me, the, the, why I like the poem is like I like to like when in some poems pile on the rhymes, not just have one word rhyme with another, but have have it rhyme four or five, six times. I, I like that effect. I think it, uh, and that's a poem where I did it in the in the first stanza. So that's why I like it. The silly joke. I mean, I have uh, you know a lot of. Uh, uh, I didn't want the book to be just filled with like. You know, a r little rhyming puns or silly jokes. Yeah, you know, uh, but uh, a few of them. Why not? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, for the adult, the children us in us adults, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I and I'll, I'll read uh, another nose poem since the book just fell open to the adjustable nose. Okay. And, <laughs> and a nose that grows when I tell a lie is something I would gladly try provided it would then retract whenever I spoke only fact. I could be wrong, but when it's long, my nose would work so well that I would smell a thousand cents a small nose could not smell. But if I told the truth about the new sense I'd explore, my nose would shrink to normal size and smell those scents no more. When that did you start writing poems, Robert? I mean, like when, when you were a little kid? Uh yeah, well, right. Probably in like uh, late high school. By the time I arrived in at college, I was uh, I was very much into it. Nothing like this, you know. But uh, uh, but that's when that's when my uh, early exposure to to writing it and also to to, to reading it came. You know, I don't think I would. You know, I know I I wasn't really. Uh, particularly interested in, in poetry uh, as as a very young kid or or even in middle school it, it came later in high school it's a good time to, to do it when you're going off to college because then you, you get to you know major in English and spend your time reading re reading it and uh, participating in your own way by trying to write it as well did so, you have an instructor then that helped you to find your craft in doing poems right no, I had some good teachers along the way, but there was no particular like single figure who who, who I would point to. I had, a, I had you know I had a very excellent 
English teacher in 12th grade, maybe Mr. Peter Kasky. I don't know if he's still around. If he is, thank you. In in college, an influential instructor I had, but uh, was a fellow named Keith Walter, but I, I bring him up in particular because I just read the other day he 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 passed away. And you know, you know, very uh you know, it's sad, but he was, I think, yeah. 90 something. And uh, uh he would but he had an influence on me as well. But, mo but but mostly I, I wouldn't attribute it to any particular it, it, you know some some workshops I had later on I think maybe had influences that diverted me from from where I'm I've ended up writing mostly rhyming uh poetry because because rhyme in in the world of adult poetry writing which is where I started rhyme is it is and certainly was, when I was starting, very much out of fashion, and so there was a lot of uh, <laughs> peer pressure not to, you know, to only write in, in free verse. And I think uh, it took me a while to find my 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 true voice as a writer in, in writing rhyme and meter. So, so yeah, yeah. So in, in a you know, you know it was they inspired me at the same time as perhaps it was my choice which direction to go. But but there was a lot of pressure to to go. Uh, free verse and a lot of pressure not to write in rhyme. So, so but you've been out on a book tour as well with this. Uh, I wouldn't call it a tour. I've been to a few uh, to a, a few libraries, and uh, that, that's about it. I'm not, you know, as you've probably gathered by now, I'm not a performer. I'm not one of these children's poets who has a guitar and goes running around the room, you know, <laughs> entertaining children with, with my antics. But I mean, that, they're wonderful. But that's not. I'm not a showman, so. Uh, exposure in other ways on you know, social media and thing, things like this. Thank you. <laughs> yes, no problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, this book is found where all books are sold, right? Well, so. yeah, in, 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 in theory, I mean, no, <laughs> you know, no bookstore has everything and I, I wouldn't count on, on finding this on the shelf. I think you could, uh, you could certainly find it in Amazon. If, if, if you're an Amazon shopper if, or Barnes and Noble, Anywhere the books are sold online, I, I wouldn't say that any physical bookshop has it. You know, most books don't make it into most bookstores. Uh, but uh, you could go into any bookstore and ask them to order it for you, that's for sure, and they'd be happy to do that. And uh, uh, it's also found in many libraries. It's, it's, it's doing very well among, uh, among libraries, and I'm pleased to say. I love it if an individual buys it, but the idea of it being in a library and being taken out by many different people and, and, and you know, getting that many more readers it, it is attractive to me and I'm not having to pay for it and all that. So, yeah. Just like I'll tell our viewers and when we have readers, when it's in my article, besides buying yourself one, get one for the grandkids, uh, you have a party to go to and actually buy copies of kids to take to your local libraries and for your kids' school. I mean, that's that's how you get the word out there, you know, make sure that the library doesn't have one. Buy a copy for the library, you know, because uh, these are this is great, you know, great for the kids. I would like you, if you don't mind, to read the last poem in the book, if you okay. don't mind. Because that, that was like, oh. <laughs> right, well, I will 99. <laughs> the last poem in the book, which happens to be called the last poem in the book. <laughs> Eventually, each book of poems must reach the final stage when there's just one more poem to read upon one final page. And this book is like all the rest. And here's the proof you need. You'll notice once you've read this poem, there are none left to read. An inspirational word for the end of a book. Bravo. Yeah, and, uh, and the next page has a picture of Federico. Is did he draw himself? Is that kind of like he's trying to? Yes, yes. That's all. That's anything that's like art here is is, is uh, by oh, yeah. illustrator. Uh, wow. So, oh. uh, when are we going to expect your second book? I, I don't know. Well, I don't. I can't give you a date, but I have a lot of. A lot of material. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> oh. yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, if anyone, if, if, if any of your uh, viewers are in the business, 
give me give me a shout. I got picture books, collections, theme collections, uh, 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 STEM related, not STEM related. You know, wow. we'll talk. <laughs> so, what's your what's your social media? How can we how can we find you? Find out. Uh, well, my my website is bobschechter.com, b o b s c h e c h t e r dot com, and uh, you could contact me through through that, and all, all the social media will be there too, and you'll get a lot more information about the book and the reviews I've gotten, blurbs and things like that. Very and good. A few sample poems as well. Oh, how nice! All right, we'll make sure we get your link out there. That's very good. So uh, besides maybe working on a second one, what else finds your time? What else do you do? Oh, uh, uh, I'm, I'm like recently retired and I spend a lot, a lot of my time uh, on the, uh, uh, on the poems and putting together the collections. I mean, besides, you know, not saying I have no time left, but, but, mm -hmm. you know, but, but it, that and dealing with the uh, get, getting it, uh, with submissions and and writing new stuff and it, it it somehow it fills a good chunk of the day but uh uh i also uh spend a lot of time with with uh my my son who who and uh my my wife and i help my my wife is is also my book publicist by the way susanna greenberg <laughs> and so she's done a very very good job we've gotten uh, reviews in in many many different places that have helped helped quite a bit, and uh, well, she still does that, and I'll sometimes help her with that. But uh, you yeah, know, it's basically uh, basically it, 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 it's her operation, and uh, uh, right now, uh, other than you know you know moments like this, I'm, I, my yeah. You know, there's a vacation from school waiting for it to start. I live not too far from the beach. And so, oh. uh, so that's what I, I can't complain for these next, uh, for, for these few weeks that we, we've been going to the beach every day. And that's been nice too. Yeah. Cause out here we, school started for most of the kids uh, uh, starts in the middle of August and my grandson who's four just started pre-K. So it's like uh, cute to know that he's like going to school. And I always try to get, any kind of books I can on children's just because I love to, I love to read and he's getting to where he enjoys it. And, and is if I turn the page too fast, he'll like stop me so he can look at things again. And so it's kind of cool, great. you know? So that's what I, like I said, it was very colorful. And he's like, grandma, what's that? Is that ear blowing his nose? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got a very you got young. A four year old. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't know what age group, and they they call us seven to eleven, but I thought maybe people younger than seven, especially <laughs> the smart ones, <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and certain and certainly older than eleven. I hope. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, like I said, with school starting, it, folks, this is a time to to get one and and send it to your library, your local library, plus your school library. So that's great. You know, it's a good good way to to spread it out. Do you um, did you go anywhere on vacation for the summer with your family? Uh, no, because I, I live I live on Long Island, and we, oh boy, and uh, it, we we already have a a, a, a beautiful beach that you know it's it's not a, not a very far drive from us at all. So we we uh, we have the, the concept of the staycation works very well for us since <laughs> since we love the beach and it's right here. And uh, well, now you have to go on a world tour of your book. You got to get that out true, there. Got you got to go to London and start, you know, <laughs> got to get the right. book up there. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll set it up. <laughs> Tell your wife. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll get her on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do appreciate you taking the time. It was wonderful talking to you about your amazing book, The Red Ear Blows Its Nose. It's, it was great talking with you. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, and keep in touch. This is okay. HollywoodTimes.today, and uh, we have a YouTube channel called the Hollywood Times Official. So we'll be putting this out there for you to use on your social media as well, as well as ours. And uh, we look forward to talking to you when the next book comes out. Wonderful. Bye-bye. <laughs>